Jessica Carlton arrived 50 years after John Leroy and William Reed, the first missionaries from Philadelphia to Punjab, and five years before the first Indian Christian women doctors like Guru Bhai Karmarkar and Pandita Ramabai. Dr. Carlton was not new to India. Born here to missionary parents, this was homecoming. These are glimpses from letters she wrote to relatives and friends, describing the times which led to the making of Philadelphia Women's Hospital. The scenes enacted are gathered from information archived in Drexel University, Philadelphia. English treatment was what well-to-do Indian families looked for with cultural and medical shocks. The young doctor would decades later still recall her fear of this first visit. Women of the household watched with suspicion, ready to pounce at the slightest intrusion. With several rooms and a compounder to attend, Bangalore served a larger number of patients. It also became a place for exchanging views and making friends. This was the first time a European was allowed in the palace. Dr. Carlton would later write, She took the money and asked an Indian friend to keep it safely, who put it in an earthen jar and buried it in the mud floor of her house.
women patients would come and sit in the courtyard hesitant to speak and would need a parda to talk through A government publication at the time wrote the zanana quarters of women and households became a battlefield increasingly implicated in resistance to western medicine a site where disease and ignorance about health and hygiene needed urgently to be defeated Oblivious to any dramatic effect the instruments could cause, Dr. Carlton laid them out in a row. But she soon found out it was dangerously difficult to explain their shapes and sizes. No arguments prevailed. It was the missionary women doctors who drew attention to women's health and child mortality. Before them, women's health was seen as an appendage to the health of men. These makeshift trainings in due course of two decades would evolve into a nursing school. Besides the five rooms of the old hospital, by the 1920s there were two more general and six private wards, totaling 46 beds. Staff records tell about two lectures a week on general nursing, midwifery, anatomy and physiology.
Often there were 100 patients in a day and medicines cost 100 rupees every month. By 1925, the hospital had two missionary doctors, a nursing superintendent and 10 Indian staff members. This was also the year when Jessica Carlton was honored by the king. She wrote, As to the medal, I was so astonished when the king emperor put my name in his New Year's honors list. Between 1901 and 1924, Dr. Carlton alone treated 2,75,000 patients which meant 11,000 patients a year. Total number of patients during those 25 years almost reached 4 lakhs. Hospital records list operations under several categories. Obstetrics included craniotomies, caesarean sections, evacuation of uterus and suturing ruptured perineums. Total surgeries averaged well over 400 a year. Born in Nebraska, Dr. Gibbon studied medicine at Chicago and before arriving in India, spent a year studying tropical medicine at London. Almost an invitation to indulge, water brought its share of celebrations. Taps and water pipes connected the hospital facility. One can imagine the fascination of nurses fetching water just from a tap. And many would sneak up to a toilet flush and shear off the quick service. Gradually, the nursing school had trained and experienced Indian tutors teaching the students. This workforce would prove to be a major help in the days to come when field trips would increase. In 1936, the hospital formally opened to male health care, no longer confined to just women's medical care. These refugee camps took care of thousands of displaced families, distributing free medicine, milk, blankets and clothes. 
As far as women were concerned, Philadelphia Hospital was at par with medical personnel elsewhere in the world, where too the war had proven that the women were a force much required in medicine. During the last year of British rule in India, and after 18 years of public service, Dr. Gibbons was honored by the prestigious Kesare Hind by King George VI. Drawing a vivid picture of Indian culture, Dr. Gibbon said, Like the United States, Indian society was a mix of ethnic, religious and tribal groups. But instead of fusing these parts into a basic whole, as United States did in its formative years, India merely added foreign methods and practices onto those already existing. Dr. Gibbons continued her trips abroad, bringing India closer to being understood in its approach to health care. And newspapers would occasionally bring out the success stories of her efforts in India. Rajkumari Amritkar, the first health minister of India, not only set the standard of appreciation but also of expectation from Philadelphia Hospital towards medical care in years to come. Dr. Gibbons departed from Philadelphia Hospital in 1969. With the position of the head getting filled up briefly by an American and then an Indian doctor, Dr. Raj Suknandan took over a couple of years after Dr. Gibbon's departure. Philadelphia Hospital was riding a wave of popularity, and Dr. Suknandan, a surgeon, added to the entrepreneurial and medical strength. Departments gained specializations. Eye care became one of the success stories with aid from German and other foreign organizations. Interestingly, the hospital which started out as a welfare institution began to show elitist tendencies. The eye ward had a VIP section, typical to the changing times in India. The public popularity and governmental appreciations brought its share of ambitions, and Dr. Suknandan began to see a role for himself in politics. Campaigns and rallies started as an independent candidate. Many said the aspirations were directed at ultimately being the health minister of the state. But perhaps the hospital and its representation was misdirected from a legacy of missionary doctors to politicians. Dr. Suknandan badly lost the elections, never to come back to the political arena. The saving grace still remained in new trainings and employment opportunities that the hospital started. Along with the laboratory technician's training course, the hospital also launched a medical records maintenance course and an x-ray technician's training. <laughs> 